So for the previous class that we had, we managed to work with uh, the area expansion and some typical examples, which was important. In this case, we are going to have a continuation now on the volumetric change, which is the major part of uh, the subsection. Remember, it was volumetric change in solids, but we are surprised. Why are we talking about linear? Why are we talking about area? Why are we not just jumping straight to that volumetric change? Like I said, a solid, uh, yes, we need to, to consider the volume. If, if, you, if you think of a solid, the first thing that you think of is the volume, volume of a solid, capacity of a solid. No. That solid also, it has a section which is the area. What about the area also? And that area that we're talking about or the section that it is a length width what about the length? What about the width? These are linear. Their measurements are linear dimensions. So you must consider of the linear. What is of the area? We must consider the area. Now we back to the whole solid. As it is, is it a cylinder? Is it whatever? solid that you are given, now we have to consider completely the volume of that solid. Given the volume of the solid, we are saying we can have the effect in the changes of the volume. We can have effects in the changes just like what we saw on the linear expansion before, even the volume, the increase in volume of a material is due to the increase in temperature. The change in temperature affects this volume so that it can also expand, change, due to the change in temperature. So whenever we talk of that volume change, which is the volumetric change, we must consider the volumetric coefficient of expansion, just like what we had in those area and linear, all right? So let us go straight. Volumetric, volumetric coefficient, volumetric uh, coefficient, all right, let me go back. I just hope my board is not going to disturb like what happened in our previous class. So this is coefficient of expansion. Okay, so the volumetric coefficient of expansion is given by gamma. All right, so we're going to use a uh, gamma in this case. So like I said, some textbook, the uh, textbooks, they work with uh, beta when they neglect area, but guys, we're gonna use gamma, okay? So this here represents the change in volume now of a material by one unit change in temperature. Everything is back to the change in temperature. All right, so that's the change. This time in what? In the volume. So take note what you're dealing with it this time. It is the volume, all right? Of a material, of a material by one unit, by one unit per unit change, per unit change in temperature just like that, per unit change in temperature. Volumetric coefficient of expansion. And this gamma is equal to three times alpha, just like what we had on area, the beta was equal to two alpha, where alpha is our linear, so it's linear area volume, just like that. So volumetric is when 
uh, we are dealing with when we, we consider anything about volume, we are dealing with what cubic units, cubic centimeters, cubic meters, cubic, cu cubic units, liters also. And also when you consider capacity, volume, capacity, you know that you are dealing with volume. So how do we then have our calculations from there? Just like they change in area, they change in a land. We also have or gonna need the change in a volume. This time using what? Volumetric coefficient of expansion times the original volume times the change in temperature. Just like that. Meaning to say, if I was having the, the original volume, and having the final volume, I was going to simply calculate from the final volume minus the original volume. Just like I stated before that the original occurs at initial temperature. The final occurs at the final temperature. Therefore, the change in volume must occur when there is a change in temperature. T2 minus T1. That's it. And from here, our volumetric coefficient of expansion can be determined, all right? So here, uh, let us say, therefore, our gamma can be calculated as the change in volume over what original volume times the change in temperature. Remember the change in volume, final minus what? Final volume minus the original volume over what? The original volume times change in temperature, T2 minus what? T1, remember? That's T2 minus T1. So you can actually take that uh, into consideration straightforward. You can have it straightforward. So all these guys has not changed from what we had before. Whenever there is this, it's the change. The change, all right? Whenever we've got uh, the O, that is the original, all right? One, initial, which goes with original. Then two, that is the final. So uh, there's nothing that changed here uh, from what we had before. We just need to focus on calculations. We're going to see that in our next class. And also, as we consider this, I want us to understand that we are dealing with the volume. So as an individual, make sure that you do remember some of the basics of your volumes. Remember this. You are dealing with uh, a cylinder. What is the volume of a cylinder? Base area times height, pi r squared h. You are dealing with a cube. Like I said before, when you have a cube, the face is just like a square. So all the sides step. So given that one side is L, meaning to say the volume is going to be L to the exponent of three, side times side times side, three times. So you must know all the basics, all right? So some of these ones, uh, we can talk of a con, uh, in that case, the volume of a cone, remember, that's a third uh, base area times height. So that's third pi r squared h. We can talk of a sphere. So a sphere is given by 4 over 3 pi r cubed, which is same as uh, pi d cubed over 6. And for pyramids, all right, when dealing with uh, pyramids, the volume will be taken from a third of the base area times height, uh, just like what we saw here on a con, a third uh, base area times height. This is the base area, this is the height for all uh, the pyramids. And uh, for prisms, it's base area times height. If you're dealing uh, with the prisms, the volume will be base area times what times height. Uh, go back to your mathematics, uh, it's not, uh, it's not it's not bad to do measurements grade ten. Uh, just go back there and check those formulas. We have for those videos for grade ten. Just check them. 
uh, as an individual just to see what we had before. If you know these formulas, then it's going it's going to be an advantage uh, for cases where the volume is going to be needed. So remember uh, this. And uh, the last part on the volumes, which is uh, actually never occurred before when we're dealing with length uh, or area, we're going to have this one for volume. There is a percentage that can be determined from the change in volume. Yes, we can have that percentage change in length, percentage change in volume, but mostly they're going to focus on the volume. So that's the percentage change in volume. So they want you to calculate that uh, percentage change in volume uh, can be determined if we have the change is change in volume. So it follows that the percentage change in volume is equivalent to the change in volume over the original volume. So that's it. So we must have the change in what? In volume and the original volume, original value for the volume that you had. So that is uh, it. So the change in volume, remember, that's an increase, that's a decrease, whatever that you give. So when it is a negative, we are talking about a decrease in percentage, percentage decrease, a positive, that's an increase, a percentage increase. So I want you to go through uh, the basics of everything. As we can see, uh, this is the volumetric change, which is the major part of our solids covering everything that we had. So our next class, we're just going to consider one or two examples and see how these questions, uh, how questions can be asked on this part of the volumetric change as we are dealing with solids. So let us do revise our notes in as much as we can.